Hello and welcome to Not Conscious. This is Mark Poles. I'm here with Mr. Peralta, Christopher, and I have a gentleman named Anthony Pico. Anthony S. Pico has been a professional astrologer for 34 plus years and has been a professional Capricorn all his life. Although knowledgeable about all branches of astrology, he primarily focuses on natal or birth chart astrology, helping people to help themselves. Find him at CosmicTuesdays.wordpress.com. Welcome, Anthony. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. Can't complain. How's life uh, where you guys are? Hot. Dry. <laughs> no, okay. Good. Good we for hit, the most part. We hit like 111 last week, so we know how that works. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, you're much hotter than here. So, yeah. Anthony, you, I, uh, I have only been on this journey for a handful of years, and you've been doing this for 34 plus years. And yeah. I was the first, you were the first person with whom I interviewed regarding my spiritual journey. So, this is so great for me. I'm so excited that you're on today because I get to have you on. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's fun, and it, it always comes full cycle. Um, no, and you, I learned a lot from you. You know, the thing about running shows like this is we, uh, we talk about things we know, and then we talk to people we don't know anything about. And I've learned a lot from you too. So uh, one hand washes the other, as they say. So um, absolutely, it's certainly reciprocal. So what we decided to do today, if you'd love to tell us a little bit about your background, Anthony, how you got into astrology and all that. And then afterwards, we have Chris here with his uh, birth information, and you're going to do a reading for him, right? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I started, I got into astrology, well, I thought it was absolute garbage. Um I had been studying stuff beforehand. I took Silver Mind Control, uh, which is a, actually a very interesting course uh, uh, to enlighten people with, where it's, it teaches you a lot of mystical stuff without attaching anything mystical to it. You know, it talks, Silver Mind Control talks about programming your brain and your thought patterns without evoking, you know, spirits or God or Jesus or whoever you might want to evoke or, you know, uh, any, any Hindu gods or whatever. And, uh, it, it sort of programmed me to a certain degree. I, I managed to get past some of my prejudices and, uh, and I also studied a bit with the Alan Watts Zen stuff and trying to understand the concepts of reality. Um, like what is real, what isn't real, but astrology just seemed like a bag of garbage to me. It's like, Oh, how do those planets affect you? And this is all nonsense and blah. And plus it, I, it didn't help that I hadn't, an, the mother of one of my friends was so totally into astrology and she just annoyed the living bejesus out of me. So I was already kind of prejudiced <laughs> against it. Um, so in, in, uh, 1982, I had a girlfriend who, uh, went and had her chart read and, uh, she came back and she said, you know, it was really, really accurate. It might be worth just checking out. And, uh, it was such a non, non aggressive way of encouraging me. in. I figured, okay. And, and it happened to be around that time. I had noticed, uh, a lot of the people I knew and liked had birthdays around the same two times of the year. So I thought, well, you know, I didn't deliberately do that. Huh. You know, that was what day was I, that? Well, in my case, um, I had a lot of Tauruses in my life. I'm a Capricorn. And I also had a lot of very early Libras, late Virgos in my life. And uh, so this, we're talking uh, May and we're talking a lot of uh, late September around the 23rd, roughly. Um, my birthday's so the 30th, over, so um, we're close. 30th of September. September, yeah. yeah so. And Chris is September 14th. So we'll all get along fine today. Yep. <laughs> uh, um, so I, I was a little curious and, and I went and had my chart read. And uh, I should preface this by saying that as a Capricorn, Capricorns are tend to a certain, prone to a certain amount of paranoia um, because we like to project a certain image. So if anybody really knows us genuinely, it kind of freaks us out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I was so freaked out by the end of my astrology reading, I wanted to know how long she'd been tapping my phone, how she got her hands in my diaries, and which one of my friends she'd been talking to. It's funny how that um, happens, isn't it? Yeah, it was so damn accurate. I was just, so what happened is, um, I have enough Scorpio on my chart that I just have to get to the bottom of things. So I just started, gr and of course, the paranoid Capricorn's like, how did you find out all my secrets? Mm -hmm. So I just started grabbing book after book after book after book and just reading them. And some of them were garbage and some of them weren't. And I just was started processing a tremendous amount of information. And, uh, and of course, the next thing you do when you're doing that is you start grabbing your friends going, hey, come here, let me do your chart. <laughs> right, you know? right. No, um, I know that feel. I remember when I first had that little woke me, let's see what we can do. Let's meditate. Let's, let's see what we yes, can see. Yes. Uh, I get it. So, so what happened was, um, 
I was playing with it, and actually a friend of mine, the third chart I did, was also knocked out by it. And so he started studying astrology, too, and we studied together. And he actually caught up with me and passed me, passed me a long time ago. So I was a little struggling with it because on one level I thought I had to memorize like 100,000 different little things, and it was a little mind-boggling. But I was lucky enough to stumble across a book that uh, called The Inner Sky by Stephen Forrest. If anyone is listening and is an astrology beginner, uh, that is a wonderful starting point because that book strips everything down to its core meanings. And then at the end of the book, builds it all back up again into a chart. So I kind of what I kind of realized at some point from this book is that astrology is sort of a language and you make sentences with it. Um, so if you understand the basic grammar, and you can you can speak any language. Now, what I mean by that is that uh, the components of astrology, the moon, the sun, the planets, the signs, the houses, and the aspects, um, in a nutshell, philosophically, the planets indicate energy that needs to be expressed, okay, a particular kind of it. So the Mars is how we take action and how we're aggressive. Mercury is how we think and process information. Uh, Saturn is how we uh, behave and control ourselves. Uh, Jupiter is how we expand and grow. Venus indicates, of course, uh, logically, uh, love and affection and friendships and uh, a different kind of communication than Mercury. Mercury is like mind communications. Venus is kind of like schmoozing and connecting. The moon is your subconscious and your emotional side. So these, and this is, again, this is extremely simplified. So we have all these energies that want to be expressed. The sign the planet is in shows you the way that the style and energy of which that thing's going to get expressed. Okay. So if you're Mars, the planet of action is in Aries, which is a very forward sign. You're the kind of person that's going to do something right now. Understand right now we have to do it. You're going to be kind of impulsive and very impatient. But if your Mars is in Capricorn, you're going to take action by planning ahead, deciding what's the most efficient way to do it, and, and then kind of getting something done with it. If your Mars is in Aquarius like somebody on the show, but I won't mention names. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling Aquarius, we have a spoiler alert hey coming now. up. <laughs> uh, Mars in Aquarius is often because Aquarius is kind of an offbeat original sign. People with Mars in Aquarius are always trying to do things their own way. They'll come up with new ways to do things and often have problems with authorities because authorities tend not to want you to do it a new way. Stop you know, it. Whenever you ask, Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Whenever you and look in general in life, not even astrology, never ask permission because people always say no. Yeah, ask for forgiveness. Um, Come on. That's exactly it. Just do it and then ask for forgiveness. That's right. At least you, at least you got a chance to do it. See, I should have been know. in the Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so this so the planet is the energy, the sign is how you express it. Okay. The house uh where the planet falls shows that area in life where you will bring that to bear the strongest. Okay, so if your Mars, that Mars, that aggressive quality is in your career, you might be very direct and forceful in your career. If it's in your first house of personality, you might be an incredibly forward person. And then we would color it in with, well, is that forward person with Mars in the first house, is it in Aquarius? Is it in Aries? What sign is it in to say what kind of a forward person you're going to be? And of course, we tie in the other planets too. And finally, um, what aspects are? Uh, let's see how simply I can put this. Uh, the astrology wheel is 360 degrees. If you divide it into quarters, you have 90 degree angles. This is basic math. Yes. Uh, if two planets are at 90 degrees to each other, they are considered to be squaring each other. And that means that those two planets will have trouble getting along. Okay. Um, so it might be one example, as long as we're sticking with Mars so much, and Mars is about aggression and anger and assertiveness. If Mars is squaring the moon, which is about your emotional expression, usually that person has quite a temper because their first response to emotions is to get angry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, if, it's, if it forms a harmonious angle, which is when you cut the, 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 the circle into thirds, 120 degrees, then the Mars and the moon will flow well together. They might be very good at expressing the anger and their emotions without necessarily having temper tantrums. Interesting. So, so that's what I mean about how really astrology is a, when you strip it down, like the inner sky describes, it's really a way of putting the sentence together. Well, we have Mars in cancer in the third house squaring the, you know, Neptune. What does that mean? And you get, you, that's kind of a, if I said that to another astrologer, they go, oh, he must, and they'd give me comments right away. 
because they would learn the language. Right. So, so they know how the, the, like you mentioned, like a recipe. And then it's yeah. how you put the ingredients together, right? It's kind of like you add the dry to the wet. You don't add the wet to the dry yeah. kind of thing, it's right? Only teaspoon, it's only a teaspoon, not a cup of that. Okay, you know? right. And it's measurements so, and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's kind of in a very basic way how to read a chart. Uh, of course, there's a lot more nuances, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of how we actually go about putting it together for those of us. So what happens by the time I finished The Inner Sky, I realized if I just memorized about 100 things, and knew how to stick them together into sentences, so to speak, then I, I didn't have to memorize 10,000 things. Okay. You know, yeah. I could figure it out. Because um, so you understood kind of, the relationship between them all. Bingo. Bingo. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I started grabbing people's charts, and I told people, you know, um, uh, I'm a beginner. You know, I'm, I'm going to get the basic stuff. I might miss the nuances. And uh, I got a, a lesson very early on uh, that, that really taught me to trust astrology. I had a friend of mine, I'd known him for about five years and I thought I knew, you know, I hung out with him for five years. We hung out pretty regularly. We talked a lot. And uh, when I was working on his chart before I met him to talk about it, um, there was all this kind of negative stuff that I was like, oh, he's not like that. He's, I wrote it down, but I, I figured I won't bother bringing that up. So I sat with him and I told him all the good stuff. And uh, I said, so that's your reading. And he was like, is that it? Nothing else? Are you sure there's nothing else? I, I said, okay, well, you know, it's all this negative stuff. And I told it to him and he opened up to me and told me all the things that he never told me in five years. <laughs> His mother was mentally ill. She disrupted the family. His brother died when he was eight. It was a horror in the family. He had a terrible childhood. Yeah, and, it's awful. And, and I'm just sitting there going like, uh, uh, and that's when I looked at it and I said, don't don't trust yourself trust astrology because i would have dismissed all of that because i thought i knew my friend right because you 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 spent time with him, you broke bread with him, and you felt yeah, like you understood like him we talked yeah. about we talked about deep stuff sometimes you know i sure I we were um as a result we became even better friends but that's where it taught me like don't i don't mean to sound cynical but don't think you know people a lot of stuff goes on behind closed doors that none of us knows. Yeah. And astrology is a way to get to that. Um, and in the hands of a, a decent human being, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it gets a wonderful gift. I mean, over the years, uh, knowing astrology has not been as important to me as helping people deal with what's in their chart, okay. you know, and helping them understand that uh, sometimes if you shift your perspective a little bit, you know, like that person that automatically goes to aggression, you know, this moon square Mars that I mentioned, uh, which is not in anybody's chart on the show, um, is uh, you might want to turn to them and say, you know what, when somebody says something that pisses you off, count to 10, just take a breath, just hold on and see if you want to have this fight. That's a you great know? point, yeah. Um, so what, what ideally I do is I show people, well, you have these strengths and you can use them to help offset the challenges and learn to grow with your challenges as opposed to, you know, misfiring. Yeah. Because that's everything in astrology has a dark and a light side. Um, I think, safe, right? Well, I mean, yes, let's be honest. Bal I mean, the whole universe is based on balance. Uh, everything yes, has yeah, to equal right. zero ultimately. That's when, right. You're a Libra. All... Shut up. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it all has what to be. What Anthony balanced. said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but even so, you know, every planet. <laughs> Every planet and everything has a, a, a positive manifestation in a, in, a, in a less than ideal. I don't want to say bad because that's judgment. Well, it's a judgment. And yeah, it's put, it's, we don't need to put a negative spin on anything, right? Things are just but, are, right? They are. You know, but you may find, you know, one thing, it was funny. I, I, for a short while, I dated this girl and she was one of those women, actually a woman, who uh, always has to do what her boyfriend was doing. So she decided to become an astrologer. And, um, I don't know if she was necessarily suited to be an astrologer, but I didn't mind teaching her. Sure. Well, she decided to do our boss at the play. I was working with her and he was about our age. It's not like he was this, like I'm the boss and you know, he was a, it, kind of a peer group. So I said, you go do his chart and, uh, and I'll step in afterwards to clean up just in case. <laughs> Cause you know, it's yeah. the first reading, you, you know? Yeah. There, well, I, I thought, mean, there could be one misunderstanding could really yeah. take you probably in a branch off like an offshoot well, that, you don't want to go, right? Or well, she something. apparently specialized in misunderstandings. Uh, <laughs> I went in there. The boss uh, looked like a ghost. 
I'm like, what's the matter? And he goes, I have no reason to live. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And he brought up one example. Um, he mentioned in his chart, and I'll explain it very quickly. He has uh, Venus squaring Neptune. Venus is how we relate to people. Uh, Neptune can be very deeply spiritual and idealistic. And it can also, on the other side, be a little delusional. Um, because sometimes if you get too idealistic, you're not seeing what's actually in front of you. Okay. So yeah. you can get the vibe, you get the vibe in that. And if it's squaring or has a challenging relationship with Venus, the planet of one-to-one -one relationships, you can sometimes have issues with friends because you didn't perceive them clearly. Okay. Okay. So she had told him, you can't trust your friends. It's like, well, that's not particularly useful. Yes. <laughs> That's a little, um, uh, that's a little X-file, is he? Yeah. Can't and, trust and, anyone. Um, but I came in and I, I, again, having spent time doing this and learning the nuances of it, I said, well, here's the problem. I said, you idealize people and you think everybody's wonderful, but, but not everybody is right now. Everybody is wonderful when you get down to the core of their soul. But most of us are manifesting our best. At no, any certainly time. not. Yeah. So I said, in a case, in his case, I said, be a little careful with your friends. Some of them are going to be losers, and it doesn't mean you can't be friends with them, but don't necessarily trust them the way you trust the ones that are got it together. Sure. You know, so that was a different way of putting it. And then ironically, now I have it in my chart, too. And uh, sometimes as an astrologer, I'll, every couple of years, I'll, I'll exchange readings with another astrologer because it's nice to get a different viewpoint about your own chart. You know, the eye can't see itself, as they say. And uh, recently, this woman looked at my Neptune square Venus and said that... Uh, I love the way she put this. You don't do your homework before you fall in love. And I just had a laugh because it was a perfect way to describe Neptune and, and Venus. You just rush in idealistically without ever really double checking. And then, of course, you get burned. That is really interesting. So so part of the art of, a, of an astrologer, not necessarily astrology, but the astrologer, him or herself, is the way that you explain to people what's going on in a way that they can comprehend it and do something with it. Yeah. Just telling somebody you can't trust your friends is like, look, well, fine, shoot me. You know, yeah. what's, what are you going to do with that? Yeah, there's no, it doesn't, it's, it's not a how. It's a, you know, just making statements like that without any kind of resolution kind of leaves yeah. you listless. You're kind of floating in the wind or, you know, hanging out there in the wind. So, so along the way, I've learned, I've learned more about people. I mean, astrology I understood pretty well, but I've discovered that um, sometimes you learn when you're doing a reading, people will do something and you'll look at it and go, that makes perfect sense. I wouldn't have translated it that way but given the parameters of what we're looking at it makes perfect sense and then i learned something i'm i'm still every astrologer still learns from almost every reading because there's little nuances people are not that people are fairly complex i mean the sure. basics are there we all you know when i first look at a chart uh i'll kind of strip it down to like career relationships family finances and health those are the five things we all care about really yeah, you know, absolutely. And you, you can pull that out of a chart, but uh, there are still all these subtle nuances in how we go about dealing with them, the things we deny, the things we're afraid of, the things we're comfortable with. Um, so it's a constant learning process, and, and sometimes it's hysterically funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I did this husband and a wife together, which is always risky. Um, because that, very, that sounds like a recipe for divorce. I don't even know. Uh, well, it hasn't been yet, but uh, <laughs> That's good. this this one particular guy was very argumentative. It was in his chart. And uh, and they're doing the chart at the same time. And I'm trying to explain to him that he's argumentative. And essentially, it became a Monty Python routine. You're very argumentative. No, I'm not. No, it's here in your chart. I'm not that way. And I tried. I kept trying to come up with different nuances. And after about three or four minutes, his wife just touched his arm and said, dear, you're argumentative. Stop arguing with <laughs> Thank God she was there. I could have been there for hours. Uh, it sounds like you, you know? would have been, right? You know, oh, that's so funny. Th there's things that you can laugh at as the way they, you know, the, the, the ways you cut the brick walls are sometimes hit, you know, when, and you realize, well, of course, that's what he's going to say. You right. know, I'm an idiot trying to convince him and he's going to be arguing. <laughs> so uh, it's been a fat look. The 34 years have been a fascinating lesson in humanity. I can uh, only imagine. And, and the funny thing is, although Capricorns uh, can be a bit judgmental, uh, and this is this is usually when my wife goes a bit next room. <laughs> um, one of the things astrology did for me was it actually made me less judgmental because I stopped thinking, "Why well, that's an idiot," and instead thinking, "I wonder what's going on in their chart. 
what are they dealing with that I'm not? Right. So sometimes it's like somebody that never shuts up. Well, it's in their chart. They don't, they don't know how to shut up. They maybe need to learn how, or somebody's always making bad decisions. You realize it's in their chart, you know? So it doesn't mean it can't be remedied and can't be uh, alleviated or, or ameliorated in a way that makes them function better. Yeah, it's even. called duct tape. Uh, and that too. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody's too Virgo in this, in this show. I'm anyway, guilty. Uh, <laughs> um, I was called super Virgo you know, recently. Uh, well, you got a few planets in Virgo. It's yeah. Um, but we'll get into your chart. You'll be sorry. Anyway. Oh, I already uh, am. <laughs> we haven't even started yet. He's already breathing heavy and sweating yeah. on the video. Wait till yeah. you see this, Anthony. Yeah. He's just like panting and just sweating right now. He's just okay. waiting. <laughs> um, so, so that's what I see astrology as. It's, it's really, uh, at least the way I use it, the natal chart readings, it's a good way to identify somebody's skills, where they're strong and confident, and where, they, where you can tell them they can trust themselves, you know, and then where you can tell them where you, know, you want to be a little careful. You might not be 100% on target here, and there's some things you have to learn. And sometimes it's sort of funny. I did a chart once for this woman, and I said, uh, oh, you're really good with bookkeeping and numbers. And she was like, I hate bookkeeping. And I said, I didn't say you liked it. I said you were good at it. And she said, that's right. Every time she tried to quit, they'd uh, give her a raise and wanted to stay. So it, just because you're good at something doesn't even mean you would necessarily like it. You know? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, our skills, there's so many things. I mean, nurture is part of it. Like if I learned to be a mechanic, but I wanted to be a pilot, I may have been picking up a wrench for 30 years. So I'm a mechanic, regardless of what Doesn't I desire. You know, like I might be a, have a hobby as a pilot, but my yeah. profession yeah. would be the mechanic. Yeah. And that's part of how, you know, there's always various things you can manifest in a chart, you know, and, uh, you know, for example, in my chart, um, there's a lot of things that indicate I, I'm great with graphic arts. I'm not, I'm not always the most logical thinker. I tend to be more intuitive and, uh, in a bit of a fog, you know, which worked well as an art director on magazines. Um, but then what happened is when I got a significant transit, which maybe we'll talk about later, Saturn returns, uh, I became an astrologer and I realized it also satisfied the same things, kind of this intuitive creative side that wasn't necessarily linear and logical. You know, there's no, there's no logic to art directing. You take the pictures, you move them around and at some point it looks right to you, but or feels hell, right. Right. Yeah. Or what the hell does look yeah. right or feel right mean? You yeah. Can't put it down a plus B equals C. Yeah. That's why and, art's uh, very subjective, right? Let's be honest. I yeah. mean, you could look at the same painting in two different moods and love yeah. it in one mood and, and absolutely despise it in another. And it's the same, it's the same art. It's just how you approach it. Or even for that matter, a, a trained artist is going to see it completely different than a person that doesn't know anything about art. Yes. You that's know? yep. Um, absolutely. So a lot of astrology is to me is understanding how that person perceives the world. Okay. And uh, sometimes telling them that they're right to perceive it the way they do. And sometimes, well, you know, you're being a little idealistic here, or a little overly, uh, overly con delusional to yourself about what certain things are. Um, but it comes in really handy and, and it does help. You can sometimes help focus people. I've, you know, uh, look, as an astrologer, nine times out of 10, people come to me in a state of crisis because it's like things are so screwed up in my life. I, I got to talk to somebody and they end up coming to an astrologer. Yeah. And usually it's even before they get to me when I'm working in their chart the day before, it's like, Oh, I know why they're coming to me because it's there in their chart. Right. You know? Sure. Uh, you, well, it's like going to a doctor when you have the heart problem, not like why right. you're the whole time getting the maintenance scheduled maintenance. Right. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, and I do have people come and just check in. It's like, it's been a year. What's going on in my chart? And I'll give them ideas. But, uh, and that's something, too, about the so-called predicting the future, which is where we get a lot of um, pains in our asses from people that challenge astrology. Uh, I don't predict the future, but I do make forecasts. And okay. I look at it this way. Uh, the weatherman can tell you it's going to rain tomorrow, and it does. But you have to decide, are you going to go out and have a picnic anyway and get wet? Are you going to get a tent and have a picnic under a tent? Are you going to get an umbrella? Are you going to stay home and change your plans? That's where free will comes in. Right. It's like so, preparation of how you handle the thing that's yeah. coming. Like I can, I can look at a person's chart and maybe they're getting some, you know, just as an example, heavy Saturn transits. And I might say, you know, this is really a year of, of self-examination and rating yourself and getting rid of the crap in your life you don't need. It's not a fun period, but it's about cleaning house and, and stripping yourself down and getting, being responsible. And so whatever you do with the next year, you might want to work with those themes. It might not be a great time to start a new business. It might not be a great time to take a fun trip to Disney.
because you're you're really not going to be in that head yeah you know but i also might turn to somebody and say this is a great time for the different trends to start a new business try something new next year you should embrace everything new you know okay. so that's the kind of forecast thing i'm not going to Sometimes I have clients that go like, well, what exactly should I do? It's like, that is up to you. <laughs> I, I, I always sidestep that because I have a few clients that will be like, so what should I do? It's like, I don't know. I'm not you. You know, I can tell you, well, you might want to check out this or this or this, but I'm not going to say it's, it's A. A is the guaranteed thing. You know, there's got to be freedom in, in what you do. Yeah. Nothing's locked in stone, but there are tendencies, you know. Uh, yes, for sure. You know, the, the, the joke I make about free will, it's like free will, we always think free will, we can do whatever we want. And on one level, that's very true. But on another level, there's there's certain physical circumstances that you can't easily get past. Yeah. And if, if you like, have, if you have, you have zero pitch control, you can't be yeah. a singer. You just can't. I mean, they're, no, they're, I'm you're, you're limited, I, right? I know. I'm tone deaf and I, and I try to sing and my wife tells me to please stop. <laughs> well, that um, wasn't it. That wasn't at you, Anthony. I had no, no I idea. Know, just I'm, so you know, <laughs> well, I'm, I want to be clear. I'm, I'm not attacking you, sir. I'm sure you sing beautifully. <laughs> no, no, they, the cats don't even like it anyway. Uh, but no, but I, it's true. And, and, you know, the, the, the parable I always use is if you're, if you end up being only five foot two inches tall, it's very unlikely you're going to be a, a world-class professional basketball player. Right. However, we all know and we all know cases in our lives where somebody just puts their head down and hammers against adversity. And maybe if you really bust your hump, you might be the very first world-class professional five foot two basketball player. It's right. possible, yeah. but it's not easy. No, so certainly that's the not. Thing about free will. Some things flow more smoothly than others. And uh, sometimes when I'm talking to clients and, and, and you, know, you, you have no idea how many people have issues of control, um control issues no yes yeah, imagine that and <laughs> i always try to say like you know people always think control is like pinning something down and holding it still and making it behave a certain way and the problem with that idea of control is whatever you're pinning down is always trying to escape okay yeah. it eventually gets away from you and i always use the the analogy of a surfer um they paddle out into the ocean and they wait for the wave to come. And when the wave comes, they stand up in the board and they flow with it. So control to me, the ideal healthiest form of control is when you read the energy of what's going on around you and flow with it. That makes sense. Or as Teddy Roosevelt once put it, do whatever you can with whatever you have, wherever you are. Yeah. That's control. Yeah. If you're trying that makes sense. To come, the more you try to impose your belief system on top of something that really doesn't want your stinking belief system imposed on it, the easier it'll be for you to, to roll with what's there. It doesn't mean you have to deny who you are because right. you're still going to be being you when you're reading the energy of the room and deciding what to do. But it's less, it's less control and it's more um, tuning into what's going on, you know? Yeah, and I found that as I've started this spiritual journey, right? I mean, when I, I remember when I came to you, I, I come from a German background. We're all material, not materialistic, but we're material. Uh -huh. My parent, my parents were both born in Germany in the forties. So my dad was 40, my mom, 44 during wartime, they had nothing. So having something meant a lot to them. So uh -huh. my dad's a hoarder and you know, my mom's whoever she is. But when this spirituality piece came into my life, I had zero idea how to, I fought it because I was so used to things you had to touch. It had to be tangible, right? Like touch, see, feel. Uh, yeah. And this thing is so not that. It's so counterintuitive to that philosophy that I was very confused for a number of years. And yeah, it's true. I understand that. And and what one of the things I learned that was so important to me, because, you know, I'm uh, Virgo's an earth sign. I know you're not a Virgo, but uh, Capricorn, me, I'm an earth sign and I have an earth moon. So I'm very practical. And it took me a long time to get past that myself and accept this stuff, except, you know, I'm always results oriented. So I'm like, well, I do the chart and it works. I don't even know exactly how it works, um, but I have 34 years of it working. So right. I'm not going to question people go like, well, how can you believe that? It's like, well, you don't even know how it works. Like, but I know if I press this button, it works. Then, then why do I need to know? 
necessarily. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice so that I didn't have to fight with people all the time going, it's just a bag of crap, you know? <laughs> no, it's not, but okay, I know you believe Okay, that. right, yeah. And, and um, it's hard, too. I'm a how and wire. Chris Chris is a how and wire as well, I think, and that's why kind of we start a lot of this, is we're trying to delve into how and why things work and everything, and um, I know we have a couple questions after you do his reading, but please feel free to uh, share more of your story, and then we'll get into the reading, and then we, and then I know we have a couple couple pieces after yeah. that. Well, well, you know, the thing for me, the spiritual lesson in general, not just astrology, is uh, I'm a huge fan of the Seth material, which is a series of books channeled by Jane Roberts. And uh, basically, in a nutshell, although it goes on for like volumes, uh, the entity Seth says that we create our own reality all the time on every level. Uh, nothing is accidental, but it doesn't mean we're the human us is creating it all the time. You know, there's a larger sense of ourselves. You know, if we think of reincarnation, there's like the main, you know, there's the main soul of Mark or the main soul of me, uh, but there's all these branches that reincarnate. And so sometimes we come into this world deliberately to, to learn certain lessons. Mm -hmm. So we create reality all the time. And uh, one of the points Seth has made is that the physical world is created from the dream world. Like we have to imagine and dream things before we can create them. Okay. So in a sense, the entire material world is a spiritual creation. And uh, I know a lot of, you know, a lot of times you get into deep Zen stuff and they go, all of life is an illusion. And, and at first, our first response is, no, this means something. And uh, I always say, well, yes, it's an illusion, but it's an illusion we all chose to create, and it's a very important illusion. Right. That's why we created it. Absolutely. And I'm very fond of the illusion called Anthony Pico. I've been working <laughs> on this all my life, you know. So totally. Like like actors in a play, while the play is on, you're taking it seriously, because that then then it has meaning, and so it doesn't mean our lives are meaningless. That all life is an illusion. Um, it does suggest that sometimes when we're taking it insanely seriously take a deep breath, brother, you know, uh, <laughs> as, as the cartoon Pogo once joked, uh, the cartoon comic Pogo, don't take life too seriously. It's not permanent. <laughs> That's okay? true. You know, um, and Seth even says, just to mention Seth one more time, I'm not going to delve deep into it. Uh, anything done deadly seriously will not work. Seth is always pointing out as we have to have a sense of playfulness about everything we're doing, even when it's serious there should be a sense of play and inventiveness about what we're doing. You yeah. Know? That's a good um, attitude to take. And, and believe me, I, I've struggled with that one a lot <laughs> and I've gotten better at it, but you know, I'm 66. If this isn't something I discovered <laughs> at 22, you right. know, uh, as I had to run into a lot of brick walls at 90 miles an hour before mm. it got through my head, you know, I'm uh, still running into those. I think, I think we all oh, still, even do, at right? my age, you know, there's, Oh, there's another, I didn't see that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh no it's all a process to me when we finish our lessons then we probably just leave it's like oh, i'll come back next time for another lesson yeah so I, I figure as long as we're still here we're not done yet perfect you know um but uh so that's really what i i get a lot out of this and and it's been tough for me because i've had to accept the fact that i don't know how it works but when i had that first reading it was so dead on target um and, and it turned out she wasn't tapping my phone so uh <laughs> you're oh she wasn't google yet or or no, facebook was, or anyway this is pre-internet baby That's <laughs> well i'm just checking if alexa's listening because we've we've got a couple of questions about that i'm sure alex is listening oh we movie. know and, uh, <laughs> you, and, you we're know going to talk about on another podcast but we know uh, we know alexa's listening you know what's interesting you should ask her what she thinks of jeff bezos anyway <laughs> uh i think she's prejudiced anyway uh so that's really what I get into, you know, when I'm chart reading is like, well, where are your strengths? Uh, where are your problems? And usually because they're coming to me at a particular time, uh, I'll talk to them about this particular period of time. You know, like, well, right now, why you're feeling angsty is because it's really time for you to transform and grow. And, you know, growing's tough. You've got to let go of some of the past and you're afraid of letting go of it, you know, which most of us are. So those are the kinds of counseling you do. So you'll give the, here's your chart. This is who you are kind of and how you manifest it. And then here's hammering at you right now and why you're feeling a bit crazy or feeling a bit. And then you try to explain to them, try to find a way to roll with this energy that is in tune with who you are 
and is cooperating with what the planet is asking you to do. Now, sometimes you get a client, they come in and everything they're doing is completely in alignment with everything going on in the chart. And it's, that's a fun, a fun one. Cause you just pat them on the back and say, you go ahead and do some more of that. You know, yeah, it sounds interesting. I don't think, I think I'd be fighting everyone. Well, it could be, or maybe that's what you're supposed to be doing. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. maybe you're a fighter. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I don't think everybody has to have a chart reading. Of course, financially, I'd like them to. But <laughs> if somebody's, <laughs> let's be honest, I am making money in this. But, I hope so. Uh, if, uh, if somebody's kind of living in alignment with the universe, they don't need any of these systems. You don't need numerology. You don't need your palm read or a tarot card reading or astrology if you're kind of already in tune. And there's not a lot of us that are completely in tune 100% of the time. But I have met people that clearly you're a little more evolved than me and you, things seem to flow a little easier for you because they've been listening to whatever it is we need to listen to, you know. I've it's always seen this as having the same destination and we're all either on a direction to get there, but we're either on a different mile marker or a different road, but we're all kind of getting there. As long as we're working towards that goal, we're good. And some of us are flying a jet and some of us are crawling on our hands and knees. Yes, uh, so some of us in reverse, have, by the way. Yeah, and some of us back up every, every <laughs> now and then and wonder why everything is fading away. Like, why is it going farther away? Um, yeah, and, and that's that's a key point. It is it is a journey. And that's, look, if I do a chart for somebody at 22, it's going to be a bit different than when I do a chart at 66. Um, more often than not, when they're in their early 20s, they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, that is me. Oh, wow, yeah, I do do that. Mm -hmm. Um by the time you get to their 50s or 60s, it's like, yeah, I've done that. Yes, <laughs> I've made that mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so nonchalantly, right? It's not like, oh, my gosh. You're like, yeah, I've done that 32 yeah, times. Yeah. yeah, it's not quite because you've had like 40 years <laughs> of running into that stupid brick wall, you know. Right. Uh, and you know where all the lumps are. It's like, yeah, I got this lump in 1947 when I, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, comparing so, battle uh, scars, right? Yeah, pretty much. And uh in terms of, of transits to planets, there's, there's two sets of transits. Um, there are transits we all get at the same time in our lives. And then there are transits that are unique to us. Now, what I mean by that is, um, and I'll just use Saturn as an example, but all the planets have the same concept. Every takes a certain amount of time to go around the solar system. Now, Saturn takes about 29 years. And when you're 29 years old, your Saturn returns to where it was when you were born. Okay. And we call that the Saturn return. Now, everybody gets that at 29. So, and really what, in a nutshell, without getting deep into it, a Saturn return is really when you become a grown up. Um, you know, Saturn represents authority and structure. And for the first 30 years of your life, you get all your structure, from your parents, your teachers, the school, the judge, if you go that way, uh, the police, the ministers. And then, of course, your first first decade in your 20s, your bosses and your work environment, and you're defining yourself by these things, you get to be around 29, Saturn returns and you become your own authority. You're now a grown up. And now it's you're in charge more than anybody. You're always in charge. But more than ever before, it's almost like astrology says, puts their arm in your shoulder and says, brother, it, you're on your own now. You know. So these um, may not be the same, but this made me think right away. There's that weird 27 suicide age. Yeah. Is that is that tied into that twenty nine year Saturn? Because um, it's right right before you kind of hit adulthood. I mean, okay. so many people. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, yeah. if it's not, we no, can no, certainly no. move forward. There's a there's a slight com combination to it. Um, you're actually asking about things, and I'm not complaining. That are <laughs> uh, very progressive in astrology. So it would take a little more to explain. But okay. before we get our Saturn return, there was kind of an emotional self confrontation at twenty seven or 20, roughly. Oh, okay. And if your entire life you've been maybe depressive and going in the wrong direction and everything, 27 might be incredibly hard on you, okay? And you may decide, I would like to say erroneously because I'm not a fan of suicide, um, uh, this is it, I can't take it anymore. The reason I'm not a fan of suicide is, um, I, and I'm not to being judgmental about this. No, but, it's, it's a sad well, result of some things is what it is. Well, it's unfortunate. Plus, we all create the universe together. So you're kind of like opting out of cooperating with the rest of the world. You're almost saying like, I don't want to, I don't want to play this game anymore, all of us together. And, and we lose something as a result. 
you know, that particular spark is gone now. You know, yeah, they're, they're not contributing said, anymore, right? Energetically right. or in any way to I mean, the look, growth of everyone. Me, and I'm not saying this is the 27, 28 thing, but there's parts of me that still wishes Frank Zappa was around. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm sure he'd have something very interesting to say about what's going on now. Uh, I'd love to wish John Lennon was still around. I'm sure he'd have something very interesting to say about what's going on now. So there's that sense of a certain amount of loss of that input from the person. Yeah. You know, maybe that's selfish in my part. You go ahead and live in misery. I want you to stick around. Right. But uh, again, they're not, I don't think they're necessarily processing it all the way through. And that's why they hit that brick wall and decide, you know, I think I can, I'm, I'm going to leave now. And sometimes, sometimes it's quotes an accidental suicide like Hendrix yeah. uh, choking on his own vomit. But, but I don't think things, I'm not a big fan of accidents. So it's Joplin, some, right? I mean, you've got Amy Winehouse drinking herself to death. Right. So many, know, so many unfortunate. And it tends to be in the artist side that happens to have the more energy, in my opinion, you know, than the logic, because it's the emotion oh, and the feel. Although they're also the people that are going to be in the papers. If Joe, the accountant, does it, <laughs> right. it's not going to get in the front page of the Times. Yeah, it's true. Um, so that's, that's, again, this is part of that skewed perspective. It's like you're trying to keep track of, like, Am I getting the full information? And I'm not I'm not saying it's fake news, but I'm saying if somebody keeps going over here, over here, over here, you're gonna look over there. That's its own podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we uh, actually talked about that. Like the the main Chris, you wanna chime in on that? How many sources how many how many news sources we actually have in our world that we actually get information from? There's five corporations that own all mm. of the newspapers, media and outlets, and I don't know what Books. And, and that's only changed in the past 30 or 40 years. Correct. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, you weren't even allowed to own a newspaper in the same town you had a radio station. You know? What? Uh, that was, yeah. Those, <laughs> laws, were, those laws were broken up uh, oh. in the 80s by the Reagan. And, yeah, and deregulation. The deregulation. If you had a newspaper in Chicago, you weren't supposed to own a radio station. Wow. Because that's... you were monopolized. You wanted to. We actually wanted differing opinions back then. Right. Uh, now they want us to all goose step together in formation. Okay, that was a little political. Well, anyway. manipulate us. No, that's not political. That's 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 a consciousness. That's a yeah. legit. Con that has nothing to do with left or right. That is not political. That is how we okay. are controlled, right? So no, we can we can talk about that all day. <laughs> the word goose stepping does have some baggage attached to it. A little it. bit. A little However, bit. it's uh, accurate. Well, yeah. I'm, <laughs> but uh, so. Um, you know, so again, it's all about perspective and how you 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 look at things. Now, very quickly before I, I look at Chris's chart, I do. Think there's other branches to astrology. Um, there's a branch called mundane astrology, and these are the people that look at the world events with astrology, because if everything has a beginning, everything has a birth chart. So corporations have an astrology chart. Countries have an astrology chart. A wedding has an astrology chart or a marriage has an astrology chart. When you start a job, the moment you start that job has the, an astrology the chart. The Catholic Diocese has an astrology chart. I'd love to delve into that. You obviously probably watched that podcast that we did. I, I definitely looked through some of it. Um, everything has a start. And, you know, the thing interesting about the, ch the Catholic Church is that how many times did they have renegade popes and stuff? I mean, how many times has the Catholic Church begun? Um so that's part of it too. Like Italy, I think has had 27 governments since World War II. So you'd actually put together a new chart every time they recreate Italy. Wow, oh uh, 27. I'm it's funny that we talked about 27. <laughs> that's true. Oh, well, uh, it could have been 943. I mean, I'm not <laughs> Italian. They're they're an excitable bunch of people. They're um, very emotional, from what I hear. Yeah, collapsing and rebuilding every time you turn around. Um, <laughs> so, but but as a result, you know. Um, most astrologers are not surprised by 2020. Okay. Um, one of the things every astrologer was talking, mundane astrologer was talking about was um, 2020 was going to be economic chaos, not just up and down, but people were talking about there was going to be economic chaos. There were a few here and there that talked about a plague, but they weren't the majority. So I don't want to make it sound like, you know, we are wizards. That right. Like everything. dead on, right? <laughs> yeah. Bullseye. But they're, there was clearly a lot of people were talking about by March, incidentally, they would start being economic chaos. Um, now, it could have been a stock market collapse. The, the astrology didn't necessarily know what would cause that. But there were indications in the sky, without blathering on for 20 more minutes, that um, we were going to have to redefine what wealth was. And, and, and there was going to be a certain amount of disruption in the concept of what wealthy is, which certainly the minute we started quarantining, uh, as we have witnessed, the entire world has gone a little berserk financially. 
A little bit. Um, yes. I mean, when so, does oil when does oil fall below zero dollars? Yeah, I, I mean, know. like that is just it. That was we should have just ended the world right there. It just doesn't even make sense. Let me pay you to fill your gas tank. Right. Um, and uh, but again, a lot of these things are artificially propped up anyway. But again, I don't want to get. I want to stay with astrology right now. Um, so we knew there was going to be chaos. And actually, just as a and I'm not a Monday in astrology, but I do talk to them. Um, we're going to still the the, the roller coaster is not over yet. I'm not saying more of. I'm not predicting what is going to happen, but there's general indications that until about December, there's going to be quite a bit of roller coastering all over the place. And it's an uh, election then, year. Yay. Not to get political, yeah, but hey, yeah, exactly. Let's Doesn't stop that. saying not to get political. Well, we're not. Both <laughs> of you, both of you get one demerit. Okay? <laughs> okay. Chris hates us, by the way, Anthony. I mean, he, <laughs> he likes you, I think, but he, I don't think he cares for me very much. <laughs> too late. I, too late. I hate him already. I saw his chart. <laughs> Anyway, oh, yeah. no, that's everybody hates easy. me. <laughs> Anthony doesn't like bald guys. I knew it. Uh, I, hey, I'm, I'm working my way towards that, so I'll be joining <laughs> you soon. Um, but uh, no, there's, there's certainly things going on, but, but it looks like things will be changing a bit by December-ish. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be easy because clearly everything this year will have echoing effects for years. Decades, you know? probably. And, and on one level, I mean... I don't mean to sound like a morbid here, but there's something that I'm kind of excited about this because one of the things that this crisis is doing is it's showing all the cracks in our system. Yes. And, uh, well, it, I look at it like this, like tarot, the death card isn't the death, isn't death. It's rebirth, right? It's the be it could be yeah. the beginning of some new philosophy or some new direction that we go as mm -hmm. a human race. Right. Exactly. For the betterment of all. Hopefully. Right. Uh, yes, absolutely. I, I, so, yeah, I don't uh, know if we're going to do that, but maybe <laughs> that there's a potential and, for that. And I do want to mention one other thing briefly, America's birth chart. Uh, I'd like to point out that America is a cancer. And I mean, that is a sign. Let's not get, let's not get political here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two demerits. That's not ironic uh, at all demerits, that America's sir. sign is cancer. Dose, okay, dose demerits. American sign is the moon child. And, um, well, what's interesting is that cancer is a sign, um, a, uh, stereotype says mother but really it's a nurturing sign cancer is about your home and uh there's a certain amount of uh, tradition and sentimentality about it and cancer demands a certain amount of loyalty i think we had a cancerian pre president w say either you're with us or you're against us yeah. you can't be more cancerian than that <laughs> oh and cancer is about making your home sure give us your poor you're tired you're hungry our entire country has been founded and come here and make your home if you're not happy where you are yeah. So not anymore. America, what? Well, but they, they, you know what? The same thing was happening in the 1850s. They didn't want to have the Chinese. Then they didn't want to have the Italians. They didn't sure. want to have the Irish. Yeah, they kept right, coming right. anyway. Yeah, and yeah. now the new wave, the new wave is the ones that are always at the bottom of the rung. Always. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then they make their way up and they turn around and step on the ones behind them for some well, reason. How many second generation Americans don't want immigrants? And you're like, so you're one, you're one family removed from not being here yourself, sir or ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Not to get political. Or, that's yeah, not nothing. political, man. Come on. <laughs> now you get a demerit, sir. Uh, oh, shit. One demerit to Christopher. And, and look, you've all, we've all seen those memes of, of people going, oh, you don't like uh, immigrants, huh? And it's a picture of a Native American, you know? Right. Uh, <laughs> which uh, I don't even have to mention briefly that, that we inspired Hitler. He thought what we did with the Native Americans was so impressive that he decided to incorporate it into his plans. So Excellent. we inspired Thank you, America. Hitler. Yeah, God bless us. But America, yeah, we very, we we raped this country. Let's not the land itself and the people. Like we know this. I don't think any of us believe believe otherwise. Yeah. So, well, you know, white people tend to be a little overbearing. Are we um, talking about astrology still? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, uh, uh, what is this about again? <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, this I'm is so lost right now. Uh, America is a cancer, sir. Oh, That's America is a cancer. So. Back to you, Frank. <laughs> And yes, uh, uh, Monday in Astrology is about the politics in the world, too. Okay. And uh, um, every country has a chart. And the thing about America is that, uh, and this is a very long-term thing, Pluto takes 250 years to go all the way around the solar system and return. Well, guess how old America is? 250 uh, years? 240, yeah, we're, we're, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're basically getting our Pluto return. Pluto is about... <sighs> But Pluto's not a planet, Anthony. Come on. You should know this by now. No, I'm just kidding. 
I'm just kidding. Well, you know what? You, your mother said Pluto was big enough. Pluto anyway, will always be a planet to me, sir. I'm of that. I'm of the same. I agree. I, I would like to point out, by the way, uh, some of the erroneous information. Pluto was voted not to be a planet on the last day of a conference of astronomers when basically 80% of the people left and the 20 people hanging out at the end said, let's make Pluto not a planet. Really? So it's not even agreed with. On top of it, um, they're astronomers. This is astrology. Pluto's a planet. Okay. We call the moon a planet too and the sun a planet too. It's just the way we use the terminology. I was just kidding. We sir. agree. Pluto is a planet. I agree. Thank you. Thank we, you. Now, for because, the sake of as a matter of fact, I'm going to remove a demerit from either of you because we all agree that Pluto is a planet. Thank God I'm back to zero. You're at zero. We're still <laughs> negative one, Fuck. apparently, or one demerit. So. Um, so a Pluto return, Pluto is about rebirth. It's about um, transformation. It's about death and rebirth, like the tarot card. And um, at its deepest level, Pluto can be like the, uh, the phoenix rising out of its own ashes. So actually, right now, America is in the process of being reborn. And I think what's going on around us is labor pains, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to see what America is going to be reborn as over the next year. Or so. So, so 2026 is official, right? 250? I'm a, I'm trying to do um, the math. Yeah, I mean that sounds I, about right. It, we're right there. We're on the cusp for sure. Yeah, yeah, we're we're in the in the ballpark. It's it's beginning for to sure. have a certain amount of effect. And astrologers argue because some people say July fourth, seventeen seventy six, the birth of America. Some people argue for different dates. Look, look. One thing I will tell you about astrologers: ask five astrologers a question, and you'll get at least ten answers. <laughs> okay, we are constantly quibbling with each other. About and you're bipolar, one. apparently. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's apparently. Oh yeah, uh, all right. I'm not, but my other, I'm not, but my other self is. <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> but uh, so other branches of astrology, um, there's something called well, there's medical astrology, which focuses primarily on medical issues in the chart. And uh, a good medical astrology usually has a pretty good medical knowledge in general. So they're not anti-science, but they look at the spiritual and astrological reasons of what's going on, and. Uh, I do know one of my medical astrologer friends actually works with a few doctors. When they're stuck, they'll go like, what's going on in this patient's chart? Of course, doctors don't like to talk about that, but sometimes they do do that. Uh, there's another branch of astrology called orary astrology, which is spelled with an H, orary. Um, that's probably the freakiest part of astrology. It's basically fortune telling, like tarot card readings. Uh, an orary astrologer, what you do is you go up to them and go, well, I get the job. I just, uh, I just had an interview. And what the orary astrologer will do, will set up a chart for the moment the question is asked wow. and then read the chart based on what what is applying the moment the question is asked. And uh, I've found, again, it, it works pretty well, although, of course, you know, I have you have to be specialized to work in it. Orary is a slightly different system than natal. Um, they have slightly different rules because it's not the same as natal. You're actually, you know, one planet will represent the person asking the question. One represents the astrologer. One, one represents the problem. You know, right. so it's a little different, handled differently. For sure, so those are all different different branches of astrology. And okay. uh, something I want to mention, which um, I'm sure you're going to ask me about, uh, there are two schools of astrology. There is tropical astrology, which is what's in most of the Western newspapers, and there's something called sidereal astrology sometimes referred to in india as vedic v-e-d-i-c astrology okay. and i only know from star trek i remember hearing vedic in like uh bajorans or something i think, I'm geeky. I think you, sorry I you're out. talking about the klingons you're very confused <laughs> oh yes anyway. them, them too <laughs> kapla uh, in the I have a, kapla sorry. yeah uh Shoot. now this is where people um when astrology was first codified like five thousand some odd goddamn years ago uh, the constellations were in the same place as the dates, okay? So when we talked about the beginning of Aries in 3000 BC, the constellation Aries was at the beginning of spring. Okay. And all the constellations lined up with the dates in astrology. Um, however, there's something called the precession of the equinoxes. Uh, it's the wobble of the earth. The earth wobbles and over the years the stars have actually moved right okay and i was going to um, ask that so thank you for bringing this up that's okay because this is something that a lot of people use to point and, and say oh astrology sucks um 
Now, we also, by the way, use the wobble of the Earth to measure off the ages of astrology because it takes about 24,000 years for the Earth to completely wobble. Yep, 72 and years per degree, I believe. Roughly. So, what, and each of the ages of astrology lasts around 2,000 years. So, when, you know, we heard from the 60s, oh, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Well, roughly, yes, Aquarius, the age of Aquarius started sometime in the last hundred years or so. So we're at the beginning of the age of Aquarius. Uh, we just finished the age of Pisces for 2000 years, which yeah. started curiously enough around the time of the rise of the Christ story. And I've heard um, that the fish is due to that. The yes. symbology of the fish is due to the dawn uh, the house of Pisces. And Pisces in general is really, it's the empathetic sign that includes everybody. And then you have a, uh, a religious figure that comes up and said, God loves everyone. I love you all. I'll take care of you. It's a very Piscean kind of a thing. Right. Um, we're switching to Aquarius now because it's a little different. So, but anyway, going all the way back to this two, two schools of astrology. So um, tropical astrology has sticked with the dates and the seasons. Um, so even though when the beginning of spring comes, it's actually in the sky, this, the constellation of Pisces is there. Um, tropical astrology ties the signs to the seasons. So Aries starts spring, Cancer starts summer, Libra starts fall, and Capricorn starts winter. Um, and there can be, and I can go on for a half an hour on this, I won't, um, but there, you can actually tie in the qualities of the seasons with the symbolism of each sign. Okay. Uh, Vedic astrology continues to follow, or sidereal actually means star-based. Sidereal astrology follows the stars. And uh, so if I was a Capricorn now, if I went to an Indian astrology, they would consider me a, a, a Sagittarius. Um, and they would read the chart a little differently, although curiously enough, I've had sidereal readings and I've had tropical readings, and they define the same person. Wow. So however the techniques are that the Vedic astrologers are using them, they're still working and Vedic astrology is so traditional, they don't include anything after Saturn. They say okay. if, if it's been discovered after that, we don't care. Now, a tropical astrology, and, and I believe that we discover, and this is a philosophical thing, we discover the newer planets as we, uh, as we evolve as salt society and culture. So Uranus, the planet of freedom and individual rights, turns up when? The beginning of the American Revolution, the French Revolution, when suddenly people didn't want to have kings anymore. They wanted to rule themselves. And human rights mattered. And that's when, her that's when Uranus turned up. Hmm. And you can tie in Neptune and Pluto and other stuff to the same thing. Again, I, I don't want to turn this into a textbook on astrology, but I just want to give you the ideas and the Absolutely. concepts. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, know you for that. So, uh, so there are all these different branches. I specialize in individual personal astrology. 